Hi, my name is Mike. In today's video, I'm calling it Wake Up Church as judgment will start at the house of God. Um, let me start by reading about judgment starting at the house of God from 1 Peter 4, 12 to 18. Beloved, think you not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you, and on their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and a sinner appear? The church needs to wake up from its slumber, its lukewarm state, as they think all is well. I believe Jesus isn't enough, some will say. But lip service and no heart is not a sacrifice acceptable to God. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength, and turn away from all sin. Now for the scriptures, I'll start by reading Revelation 3, uh, 14 to 19. When uh, Jesus rebuked the church of the Lacedaeans, for being lukewarm, Revelation 3, 14 to 19. That's most of the church nowadays. So uh, Revelation 3, 14 to 19. And unto the church, angel of the church of Lacedaeans write these things, said the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. But know not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou may be rich, and white raiment, that thou may be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with ulcer, and they may see. As the many I love, I rebuke and chastise. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. So these were Christians, but they were lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. Um, also, Romans 12.1. Romans 12.1. I beseech you, brethren, therefore, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Matthew 15, 8. Matthew 15, 8. This people draw nigh with their mouth and honour me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And also Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. And uh, 1 John 3, 9. 1 John 3, 9. Whoever is born of God do not commit sin, for his seed remain in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. Jesus is only coming for a church without spot or blemish. Uh, as Ephesians 5, I'll start with 1. To 20. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also have loved us, 
and have given himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God for sweet-smelling savour. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let not be once named among you as becoming saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For you were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving that what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done to them in secret. For all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whoever doth make manifest is light. Therefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, and not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and to be not drunk with wine, that where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll carry on at verses 25 to 27. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify with the cleansing of it, with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Is the church holy and without blemish? Okay, so I'll leave that there. Many believe the church will be raptured before the 144,000, but this is not true. As Scripture says, the 144,000 are the first fruits redeemed uh, from the earth. That's in Revelation 14. One to five. And I look and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and a voice of great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty-four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb where he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. So these are remnants from the church who have given their all to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The church must come away from supporting things that go against scripture, like abortion, which is murder, like the alphabet crew, if you know what I mean, like putting man in front of God. And the list goes on and on. Um, let me just read a couple of scriptures. First one being uh, 1 Corinthians. Six. I think that's the phone just gone off. First uh, Corinthians six nine to ten. First Corinthians six. Anyway, First Corinthians six nine to ten. Um, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, 
nor abusers on themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And also I'll do Romans. Uh, Romans 1, 18 to 32. So Romans 1, 18 to 32. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath sowed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but because vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to wick uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonour their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was met. Um, and I'll carry on uh, to 32. And even as they did not like to re retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to retrograde mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, Malicousness, full of envy, murder, de debate, deceit, uh, magnity and whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God and that which commits such things are worthy of death, not only do they do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Um, and I'll do also Matthew 10.37. Matthew 10.37. He that loved father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That includes anyone you put ahead of God. So the question is, is the church rapture ready? Far from it. Only a remnant of the church is ready. And as brother Howard Pittman was shown at a specific time period of 15 minutes on the earth in 1979, about 2,000 people who died. And I want to show that uh, video clip. Um, it's a couple of minutes long, but I'll leave a link to the full video at the top of the comment section. So here's part of the video. Well, I don't suppose you have to believe that to go to heaven. I just didn't want you surprised when you got there. I want you to know it's in God's word, and it has been ever since we've had this Bible. I arrived outside of the gates of the third heaven. Ready to go and plead my case. The angels stopped me. They said, we brought you to that tunnel to perceive four truths. You saw only three. Go back and look again. They brought me back and let me look. Until 50 saints had been permitted to enter the gates of heaven one at a time. They returned, and I still could not perceive the fourth and final truth. So they told me what I was looking at and was not aware of. They wanted me to be aware of the number of the saints in the tunnel the insignificant number matthew 7 14 for straight is the gate narrow the way which leadeth unto life 
and few there be that find it. And then they told me what I was looking at represented one 15-minute segment of time where God had harvest out of the planet Earth. That 15-minute span of time, August 3rd, 1979, from 4.45 to 5 o'clock, approximating the distance in time from where the paramedic judged me to be dead in that ambulance until my body arrived at the hospital. In that approximate 15-minute span of time, these 50 saints had died the physical death in Christ, and their physical body was right where they died, but their spirit had gone home. Know that you are an immortal spirit. When this old flesh dies, the spirit's going to leave this body. No spirit can, in, can inhabit a dead body. Physical death expels all spirits. Your spirit will be released from that body the moment that body dies. That spirit won't go to sleep in the grave with the body. It's going home. The angels let me look. Now, you won't go home by the way of the grave. You won't even make it to the cemetery. Don't you fear the grave. You won't know the grave. Saved or lost. There's a place for you on the other side of that veil. Although if you're lost, the grave would be a welcome respite. But you won't know the grave. That spirit will go home. Then the host in heaven said to me, while you, why? We permitted you to look at this 15 minutes because it represented the spiritual condition of the planet Earth. They said to me, along with those 50 saints, who died in that 15-minute span of time, 1,950 other humans had also died with them, but they were not there. They had taken the other door out of the backside of the veil. 2,000 humans had died in one 15-minute span of time on the planet Earth, and 50 of them made it to heaven. 97.5 never made it. Only two and one half percent made it. Matthew 7, 13, For broad is the gate, and wide is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. In one 15-minute span of time on the planet Earth, a specified, this was not an average time, it was a specified or specific time frame. Those 50 saints that died in that specified time represented God's whole harvest on the planet Earth. Had August 3rd, 1979 been the day the trumpet would have blown so loud it would have wakened the dead, Jesus would have found two and one half percent of the planet Earth ready to go home. 97.5 would not have made it. Think about it a moment. If it had been August 3rd, 1979, would you have been in that number? If not, thank God for his mercy. Long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. But there is a time in... Okay, what I'll do, I'll leave a link to the full video of that so you can watch that. So make Jesus Christ your priority. Seek Jesus Christ today in heartfelt prayer, repentance, and turn away from all sin. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, to give you a new heart. Um, I'll finish off with some extra scriptures. Um, John 3, 16 to 18. John 3, 16 to 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believed on him is not condemned, but he that believed not in, is condemned already, because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And I'll finish with this, Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto him, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
And the verse before it is important. Now when they heard, uh, I'll read from 36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God have made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what should we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptised every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And it goes on, For the promises in you and to your children and to all that are far off, so even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify, exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptised, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Continued steadfast. Um, like I said, I'll leave a link to uh, Brother Howard Pittman's video at the top of the comment section. God bless you all. Bye-bye.